Hey everyone, Hans here and today I am going to do a video where I show you a campaign that I recently built and the data set behind it. The reason I'm doing this is because it's been a while since I actually did a campaign as in an actual email. Um, usually my videos they're around building data sets which is something that I really enjoy but obviously I also very much enjoy the actual campaign builds and the email builds and I figured I would show you guys how I did that. Now, quick disclaimer, this is um, a campaign someone else more or less wrote and I just built the, let's call the engine behind it to power all the the, um, the merge tags, the variables, etc. But I do like the campaign. It's something that I would more or less write the same as well and figured I would share it with you. So excited to show you what it looks like. Um, it's a clay build mostly there are a couple ways just like with with everything that i'm showing you there's a few ways you can do this um um building it 100 in clay and again excited to show you so let's dive in. here's the campaign that we'll be building and a couple of things that we have to keep in mind when building it there are a few more things in there that i won't bore you with but these are the main ones that um, that we'll be going over today. So basically the campaign that we're building is like, Hey, John, notice your account executives, Derek and Ryan are setting into companies like client whilst competing against competitor. I can imagine that means they're facing long and complex sales cycles, with lots of stakeholders to navigate. Relevance leaders are leveraging our solutions that could this by value proposition. Proof the surface hidden stakeholders and shortened sales cycles. Does this sound relevant for logic monitor? for example so we can just turn this into company that's the campaign that we're building and i'll show you what that looks like in clay so i actually pulled most of this from apollo which is usually a pretty good starting point company revenue like the numbers aren't really really accurate but again it's a good starting point then um the team size as well, I, I took it initially for Apollo, which um, gives you a rough starting point. You can later use clay to actually get the exact numbers and company size. You know, Apollo is good enough. Then here of the list, there are about 12,000 um, people in here for now or companies in here for now, I should say. And then the i mean this is the usual data that you get from apollo and where we actually start to build is here so this um, is the first part that we're going to be looking at how many account executives do they actually have so here um excuse me here we looked for um uh, pre-sales customer success and solution engineers then um we could lower that number and get a higher measure and say, okay, if they actually have more than three, four, five, or 10, 10 was just the number that we started with, but to increase that measure, we can make that uh, number. Obviously we can, we can uh, lower that a little bit. Then uh, later, then we're going to be looking for the account executives, but a couple other qualification criteria that we'll be diving into. So do they have at least one person in that role? So CS, the solutions engineer, that type of role that's what we're looking at then uh who do they target so one of the requirements was that they sell to mid-market and enterprise size companies and the good part about that is that okay if they sell to enterprise then um you don't really have to look into how long is their sales cycle what is their company acv and do they actually have complex sales cycles? Yes or no, because they're targeting enterprise and all of those things are pretty much a given when you're targeting enterprise. For that, I went with a pretty simple prompt asking it based on this company description, is this company more likely to target B2B mid-market or enterprise customers with that product or service or types uh, or other types of customers? Pick one of these three options as your answer. Now this you can tweak it so you could say pick at least one or pick at most two so if you know you can capture mid-market enterprise just to make sure that gpt doesn't think oh you know what could be a boat let me go with other um so as always there's some tweaking that you could be doing to the prompt then uh, i'm giving it the company description and based on that asking it to say okay do these companies are they likely to target enterprise yes or no 
because that is a qualification criteria that we have. One thing that I've found recently is um, giving, and I mean, not recently. So over the past couple of years, I've learned that working with GPT, the more you restrict it, the better. Asking it to qualify um, text, and as long as you didn't give it too many options, it actually works pretty well. Say, so, okay, does this, here are three buckets. Um, this input, where did it fit? Like with, within those three buckets and which bucket should it fit? That is a great way of restricting GPT. And then even on the cheaper models, like uh, 3.5 turbo, it still gives you really accurate results, especially if you really restrict the set, give me one word, like name the bucket, where should this fit in? And it's doing a really, really good job. And that performs a lot better rather than saying, who does this company target? What type of company does this company target? You'll get responses that are all over the place. Instead, just restrict as much as you can, uh, put a little bit of um, effort into the prompt and just you know have your presets, your buckets, your departments that are targeting your you know uh, types of customer, et cetera, et cetera. So now we know who they're targeting. Um, if they're targeting other than assuming that's either maybe a B2C company or they're targeting um, SMBs or maybe it's unsure, we can look at that later, maybe get a larger company description from a different source and then run the same prompt again just to get a higher match rate and make sure that we don't exhaust our TAM and that we really cover it as well as we can. But for now, um, you know, just um, uh, this was just a quick setup. So this is, we already have a lot of enterprise companies in here. Then we want to find account executives because we want to mention them here. And we also want to see just how many they have because that was not a qualification criteria. So Apollo told us that all these companies have at least 10, which isn't true, turns out. Now, there's a lot of way, other ways. I mean, company name, like the job types are different, right? Could be account executive, uh, could be anything around inside sales. There's and, and roles are different within companies as well. So on this, we could expand and then, you know, you get a higher say, match rate there. But then we have these people, their names in here. We need to clean it up a little bit if we're going to be using their full name. Whatever you feel sounds more natural, you know. I know if you're a Derek Smith and Ryan Johnson or just first name. Um, if you're going with just first name, there's you just split it and there's no cleaning up to do. That's obviously up to you. Then we use this function in Clay where we basically Google, okay, this company, who are the main competitors? Um, that is one way of doing it. To find competitors, there are a lot of ways to do it. As you can see, a lot of these results, they come from G2. So you could say, okay, I'm going to scrape G2. I'm going to scrape Craft. I'm going to scrape Captera. I'm going to... Um, uh, using the sales navigator and find similar companies. If they're similar, then, you know, they're competitive. <laughs> Excuse me. Then they're competitors. I'm going to look who's ranking for the same keywords. Then they're likely to be competitors. I'm going to be looking at the reviews that companies are leaving on G2 and Captera and mention who they compare them against as an actual field. And those are, be those are the main competitors. There are dozens of ways to find the main competitors of companies. I went with this way. In this case, you could waterfall this and say, okay, you know what? If there's no match, then it was a different way, especially if you're working, if you're targeting smaller companies, then you'll likely have to use different methods. Um, the, the keyword one is something is one that I like for smaller companies, see who is ranking for the same keywords or just, you know, um, Google MC who else is, is ranking closely that, um, it has a little bit more of an error rate, but for companies that you really cannot find competitors for using the methods that I just explained, then looking at keywords is a pretty decent way to still get um, your competitors most of the time. Now we have um, these snippets right here. Now, obviously you just want to extract the, um, the competitor from there. We just want the name because we wanted to actually use it as a variable in the template. So for that, we're using AI, using the input, tell me who the competitor of the company we're looking up is. This is the company we're looking up. Um, we're looking up this company. Um, so this is the prompt that is being used. And then um, it will grab the competitor from the snippet right there. And then we have this right here. We can use that as a um, variable, as a merge tag. 
Now to find clients is a little bit more tricky. There's some tools that actually index that. And then um, there, there, there are a couple of ways of doing it. Um, so I use ClayGent here and you ask, I asked it and I can actually show you what I asked it. Um, so you navigate to this website, look for the mention of any former or current clients of this company. These clients are often found in the logo section on the website where they display logos of the most recognizable companies they work with. Other times you can find this information in the testimonial section, either the company name of their client and nothing else, meaning you can ignore people names. Your output should be a single company name and nothing else. If you can't find a current client of this company, leave your output empty. Then um, in some cases we get a... Um, a current client, so that's great. Then um, we can waterfall that and um, again, look at um, G2, Captera reviews. They have a question, who did you, um, uh, they, they, so then you get the reviews and sometimes they fill the company. So this person works at that, the, the, at this company left the review. You can get it from there. Um, then there are a couple other ways of doing it. If those methods don't work, Honestly, I would um, uh, pay a really cheap VA to do it. Just give them the list and say, okay, you know what? Um, five bucks an hour, three bucks an hour. Go to all these websites, find the logo, get the company name, drop it in there. Instead of having my AEs or, or sales reps do it. That way you're spending maybe a hundred bucks and you get all of them, uh, which is a pretty fair price because then you're able to send this email that maybe now you're able to send 30 per day, 40 per day. Now you're able to send 500 per day if you actually invest that little bit of time in having um, having a virtual system do it. Then that is the entire table already. And then obviously here we want to have the, uh, the option to, okay, if all these variables align, if they're all filled out, then get me the um contact information of who use the you know who my top three decision makers use the are my current champion you know whatever your your approach is and then you want to sync those to um to your campaigns that's that that is the table that we built for this template right here so again this is the exact template that we can now send at a scale of 500 plus emails per day pretty easily after only um you know, if you don't count, if you if you don't count the time it would take a VA to find um, their clients, there's something you could set up probably within the hour, uh, and otherwise, you know, you invest a day of waiting time, and then you can um, uh, you can send this for uh, for a very very long time at a really massive scale. And the best part is you can then duplicate this. So this was targeting mostly B two B SaaS. You can duplicate this across different industries if the um, if the template performs well that's how we go about building this again as always i hope someone found it helpful and you found it inspirational and you learned something if you did um i'll be grateful if you would let me know if you have anything else that you would like to share then um feel uh, feel free to leave a comment for now i appreciate you watching and today's a friday if you're watching this today have a good weekend and hopefully see you in the next video. Bye-bye.